Hi, I'm your host, Vasco Duart. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Team Tuesday this week with Frederick van Jehauze. Hey, Frederick, welcome back. Hello, Vasco. Thank you. Hi, everyone. So Tuesday is Team Tuesday here on the podcast, and we'll dive into a, a, a team story in a minute. But before we do that, Frederick, do share with us, what's the book that most influenced you in your career as a Scrum Master? Yes, that book is uh, called or titled Crucial Conversations. Crucial Conversations, and the full title is Tools for Talking When Stakes Are High. So yesterday I was also a bit referring to, you know, collaboration with stakeholders, uh, management, high influence. So in the past, sometimes I struggled with this. And uh, this is a book that I got recommended by someone. I even took uh, a, t- a workshop, like a training. And, you know, any anything that has to do with difficult conversations, crucial conversations, being able to address a topic, you know, straight on if it's important but there is it's it's the topic might be loaded or there is a tension it's so important as a scrum master to be able to to be able to do that so this is a book that really helped me uh crucial conversations absolutely and is there like a particular tool or approach that you remember from the book that you uh like to highlight for our listeners yeah, so as such, it, it gives you, it's a tool, right? So it gives you a, a model for conversations. Um, and yeah, to 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 ba- basically continuously check if you still have a safe space eh, in a conversation where both people are listening and contributing to what I believe they call a pool of shared understanding or a pool of common understanding. Eh? If, if, if two parties or two people in a conversation or even if you have different opinions right but you're not contributing to to something common eh? then then you yeah you 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 just get remain very very opposite to each other uh, so these crucial conversations um g- gives you a, a a tool to kind of structure a conversation and you can keep that mentally and eh? when when you go through conversations it's like oh you, oh no the the other person said this that it feels like you know he's drifting again away from the 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 the, the topic that i want to address and eh? how what should i do now i should probably not you know not not pressure let me ask a question first right to to discover such what, this person, skill, what this right? person is thinking, eh? what are his his or her assumptions, right? So this this is this. Yeah. So Crucial Conversation. I think there is even a second book called Crucial Confrontations when you really need to, <laughs> yeah, uh, like I say, uh, go and tell something to somebody which is not an easy uh, I think it's called story crucial accountability, tell. isn't it? Or accountability. Could be. Yes, crucial accountability. Yeah, definitely. I'll put yeah. the link on the show notes to that book as well. No. Exactly. Very good. Well, thank you for that recommendation. Uh, crucial Conversation is definitely a great book for all Scrum Masters to go through. It hasn't been mentioned so often here on the podcast, so uh, I'm, I'm happy to hear that. Uh, and now we turn our attention to teams and how sometimes they become their own worst enemies, as it were. So, Frederick, tell us a story of a team. Give us a little bit about the context, but then walk us through the steps, those small things that started coming up that later on proved to be big problems for that team. Yes. So um, self-destructive behavior I have seen is with teams that are, yeah, let's say it's, there is a lack of openness and honesty, uh, but to that sense that, you know, they're sweeping things under the rug. eh? Uh, It was a team that was keeping things under the radar and they they just accept the status quo but it is something that is causing a conflict within the team yet nobody has really the courage or the or the um let's say um nobody really wants to address the topic anymore 
Uh, either they got tired of it or they failed or they just say, ah, well, you know, whatever it is. So can you give do... us an example? Like yeah, what, what, what does that look like in practice? Yeah. So it was, yeah, it is software development. So this was an issue about code quality. Yeah. And uh, there were very different opinions, strong opinions, strong headed opinions on code quality. And it was it was basically not visible uh, because this is happening either in code review or in any kind of quality checks that's going on. And some of the team members were really picking on the details and details of details, delaying everything. Uh, and some, yeah, then some accepted it just to do it or some just said, whatever, I'm not going to do it. But stuff didn't get finished, didn't get to done because yeah, yeah, there was this. So wait a second. View. So the, the issue was code quality, and mm -hmm. there was a disagreement in the team about what constituted good code quality, mm -hmm. and that disagreement was the reason why things were not getting to done. Is that so? Yeah, and nobody talked about the fact that there was a disagreement in the team on this topic. <laughs> So they just said, okay, this is not ready because, but they never talked about what was the reason they yeah. thought it wasn't ready. Yeah. And as a consequence, things took very long to actually get finished. But that was a symptom, of course, of uh, the underlying issue. But that's a but very really... important symptom, right? Like if, if things are taking too long to be delivered, to get to done, then we need to explore why, right? Exactly. What are the un underlying causes? Uh, and and whenever there is a problem, try to visualize it. Now, as such, I could visualize, uh, uh, you know, with facts, you could visualize it objectively. But the issue was rather with also the the, the, the developers in the team, uh, you know, starting to um, uh, dis dislike each other because of that. Uh, the, the, there was not a healthy collaboration anymore. Uh, they they were finger pointing uh, and so on. But then the biggest issue was that they didn't want to talk about it. <laughs> and if you arrive as a scrum master, I arrived with this team as a scrum master, it wasn't really visible because uh, yeah. uh, they didn't so, talk so about how, it. So how did you find out? Like what triggered you to find that actually it was a disagreement on code quality that was triggering the problem? Yeah. So this was also in remote working time. Uh, um, fully remote working. Anyway, I, I started to have one-on-one um, -on -one conversations with the team members, talk to the product owner, and just by talking about it, some things come to, li come to light. Eh? Um, but yeah, that, that didn't give me yet an approach to involve the whole team and to address this issue, for example, in a retrospective. And some of them were also rather sarcastic about it. And when there is a sa sarcasm, sarcasm, I wonder why, eh? what, what, what is happening here? So, but I did two things. First of all, what I anyhow try to do is to initiate a way that members in a team will give feedback to each other. And, um, you know, in an informal way, nothing official, um, but I initiated a way that they could give give peer feedback asynchronously um, um that you know an, another version of this is really everybody gets together in a meeting or in a call and we give feedback to each other uh, but i so, did it so how did you do it like did you did you have yeah. like a specific method you used how, how did that well go? i invited uh you know f the first the first time it's the most difficult the best is actually to set the example uh, if Scrum Master, you say, okay, I would like to get feedback from you. And if people have never given feedback to someone, they're like, wow, what is this guy asking? But I would like to have feedback of each of you about me. That sets the example. And then I invited someone of the team. I look, you see how it's going. What do you, would you like, you know, any volunteer who would also would like to get some feedback from other people? And they said, yes. And this is the way that it continued. And then um, some of them addressed this particular issue, like, I don't really like the way how you are stating your opinion, or I don't really like the way how you are commenting during the during the code review. <laughs> so that, that gives some more information. 
But then another way, and I want to refer to this one more a bit, is um, I wanted to facilitate really a dedicated retrospective on communication and and the thing and the way that things were not addressed in this team. And I used the tool that I found. It's called the Stinky Fish Canvas. And the Stinky Fish is a metaphor yeah, for issues that we don't want to talk about. And the longer that we hide things, the stinkier it will get. So I asked everybody, the Stinky Fish Canvas, is, it's a metaphor, it's a very simple format, but I give every member in the team individually the Stinky Fish Canvas, fill this in anonymously. Yeah. Then I gathered all the information together at the start of a retrospective. People could look at it. Uh, they didn't know who was writing what. Maybe pe people could guess, but anyhow. And then uh, we assembled that and I said, okay, look, look what is going on here. You see, you wrote this yourself. Uh, there, there is something happening. Let's let's talk about this. Uh, we we uh, we extracted the most relevant things from the stinky fish canvas. I consolidated it in one stinky fish canvas for the team. And that really made this issue visible. We have an issue with communication. We have an issue with the way that uh, um, we, 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 we address different opinions or and disagreements regarding code quality and code review. What are we going to do about it? And that really was the trigger then. Uh, as soon as somebody wants to start to talk about it, that really triggered the, the conversation to, to resolve this further. Absolutely. And I think this is a key insight right so use anonymous feedback because then you don't you nobody's afraid of being judged right mm -hmm. and then do the collection so that you get the opportunity to also assess what are the really big issues that we need to tackle and present that back to the team as a conversation starter i guess that was how you did yeah. it right yeah indeed excellent that was a great set of tips there so thank you for sharing that frederick you're welcome. Tuesday is team day here on the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast. But tomorrow we talk about something that goes beyond the work we do with the teams. We will talk about how to lead change and what our guests have learned from leading and participating in change programs during their career. See you tomorrow. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring.